everybody. Welcome to Capital Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch. Rob Jarrell. And today we're going to recap this Saturday's pay-per-view extravaganza with two of the top fighters in the world squaring off to be the man next to the man at light heavyweight. We'll go into that more. But uh, those two men are Sergey Kovalev, who owns three of the four light heavyweight belts. That's right. And Andre Ward, who was the former king of the super middleweight division and is moving up to take the light heavyweight crown. Also on that card, we've got Curtis Stevenson versus James De La Rosa. Stevens. Stevens, not Stevenson. Stevens versus James De La Rosa in a middleweight matchup. Someone's getting knocked out. I think it's going to be De La Rosa. Uh, we'll see how Stevens does uh, now that he's under uh, John David Jackson. Um, we have the debut. This is on the non-pay-per-view feed. What two-time gold? Two-time? Yep. Two-time two gold medal winner. Two-time. Clarissa Shields making her super middleweight debut. Uh, it's going to be a four-rounder. I'm looking forward to it. You should too. Then we got. Maurice Hooker versus Darlis Perez. That's actually the co-main That's event. That's the co-main event. Um, but that is at 140. 40. That is at 140. Um, that should possibly be a showcase fight. We'll see how much Perez has in the in the tank. And then we have a super, uh, not a super middleweight, a light heavyweight matchup with Isaac Chalimba coming off his loss versus uh, Sergey Kolev taking on up and comer Gold medalist out of Ukraine. Bronze. Bronze medalist. I must be thinking of Usyk. Yeah, Usyk is a gold medalist. Alexander Gavostik, who was actually in camp sparring with Sergey Kovalev to prepare him for the Andre Ward fight. Yep. This is very important because we have one guy who's pretty established, uh, even though he's come up short in his title bids in Chalimba, versus a guy like Gavostik moving up 11-0, nine knockouts. Uh, was last seen putting Tommy Carpency and Najib Muhammadi in a Hurt Locker. Big one. It's on YouTube. Check it out. You would not be disappointed. And, you won't. And this is, um, just a note on this. This is that flood of, uh, I want to say Eastern Europe. Former Soviet bloc. How do you want to say it? List of fighters at this division because we have Gavazic. We have Vyacheslav Shabransky. And then we also have Artur Beertsbiev, who is from that area, but trains out of Canada. And these are some hard-hitting, light heavyweights. And technically sound. Technically sound. Not a whole lot of fights, except for Shabransky. I think he's 17-0. He's got the most fights out of all of them. And he'll be fighting Sullivan Barrera. In December. That's right. And that's going to be a very good fight. But... We're going to see if he's really the good, taking off a tough, crafty guy like Chalimba, uh, who went all 12 with Kovalev, gave him some trouble in his home, uh, home country of Russia, and he's earned himself another pay-per-view bid. Yes. On to the main event. Yes. Now, we've got the crusher. 30-0 with 26 knockouts? 30-0 with 26, yes. Yes. 80 some percent KO ratio. It's in the thumbnail that you made. That's right. And Ward, who is also 30 and 0, uh, actually Kovalev is 30 0 and 1. He does have a draw. Yeah, he drew with the guy that Grover Young. Yeah, inconsequential. Anyway, these guys, outside of Adonis Stevenson, are the best guys in this division. Mm -hmm. What I was saying earlier, they have to, they're fighting to be like the number two guy. Because whether we like it or not, Adonis Stevenson is the champ of this division. He is the lineal champ. He has the WBC belt, mm -hmm. but the alphabet soup is not really there. Yeah. But he is the lineal champ of the division. He is the man. And the winner of Kovalev Ward will be a solid number two. And would be the best challenge for Donna Stevenson, even though, you know, all that business stuff gets in the way. We're not going to go into any of that. But 
we have two supremely skilled fighters fighting on Saturday. That is what I really want you guys to understand. If you have not done so yet, check out our three video series on how each guy can win the fight. They will be in the description. Yes, uh, they're, they're pretty short. We wanted to get as much info in there to educate you and keep you informed without getting too in depth because these guys are very, very schooled in the subtleties of the sweet science. Subtleties that a lot of people miss. So much so that people are still just talking about Sergey Kovalev's power. And he does a lot of little stuff that you don't see that is very effective and you kind of get overwhelmed or keyed in on that power when it's just so much more in setting up that power. Yes, he is very, very excellent at setting up the power. From his balance, he is always in perfect alignment to throw the punch at the optimal effectiveness. Uh, you see several, there was, especially versus uh, Jean Pascal because he was uh he would move and then get trapped on the ropes but sergey would have to close a lot of distance mm -hmm. and you can see him as he's jumping forward his feet are still perfectly placed for him to punch each time he lands he doesn't have to reset when he lands and that is something that ward will have to watch out for now as we said in the video there are very uh, small instances, it happens rarely, but it does happen that he does cross his feet and he does get squared up. Mm -hmm. So Ward will have to force him to do that. We showed you how in those videos. Ward is one of the most all-around fighters in the game today. He can do everything pretty well. He's not the most powerful guy but he makes up for it by doing everything else well and like we said in the video he hits you very clean and very effectively even if it's not a concussive shot you're getting discouraged you're getting moved out of place you're getting hit when you don't want to be hit and you're not able to get off and we're going to go into more of that later. What you got? Okay, so a lot of people are looking at the surface level aspects of this fight. Yes. Power, speed, activity, you know, all the stuff that any person can readily see here and out. What you want to take a look for is who implements their game plan better and who adjusts as the fight wears on. If you watch the Sullivan Barrera fight with Andre Ward, he was able to implement feints, movement, to kind of frustrate and uh, keep Sullivan Barrera from throwing when he wanted to. He pretty much warmed down mentally, and not, not only mentally, but physically, but that physicality was a result of him taking over the fight mentally. Yes. Well, Kovalev, with his plan, is just not all about power. It's how he sets it up, moves in and out, um, he doesn't, not a great fighter on the inside, but he does stuff well to get those shots off. And that means taking small turns, giving you a look that's going to disguise another look that's also disguising another look. <laughs> right. Um, and that's something Ward does excellently. Um, if you watch our video, we talked about how he stays at an angle at almost all times while he's fighting that's going to be paramount against Kovalev because watching Kovalev versus Jean Pascal, Bernard Hopkins, and Isaac Chalimba, he, he does have a lot of problem with guys that are moving. And what happens is he sometimes gets a little impatient and he begins to rush his shots and he will actually lunge in on his opponents. Against Chalimba, he was missing a lot because Chalimba has upper body movement. Pascal, not so much, and Hopkins, not so much either because, let's face it, the guy was 50 years old. But he was able to survive in there with 
someone with this overwhelming power like Sergey Kovalev. So we have to give him props for that. Mm -hmm. But what Ward has to do is force those moments. He has to keep his angles crisp. He has to keep his angles sharp. And when Kovalev gets impatient, he has to pay every single time. And Ward is capable of doing that. If you really watch him, he likes to make you make mistakes. He will give you the impression that you have an opening, such as pawing with his jab, bringing it back low, changing his hand positions. Mm -hmm. Things people normally aren't looking for, but someone smart like Kovalev will be like, oh, he just lowered his hand. He has an opening. But Ward is out of range and waiting for that counter so he can counter you. Mm -hmm. They're both thinking on different levels than the average fighter or the average fight fan. So this is going to be an exciting chess match. You're going to have two guys that really only know how to win. So, like Rob said, you're going to have to implement a game plan to force the other man into breaking mentally. That is the key to this fight. Yes, Kovalev punches hard. Yes, Ward frustrates his opponents. So, can he frustrate Kovalev to the point to where he's making more mistakes than he's used to making and then Ward is able to capitalize on those? You got anything? All right. So I'm going to say this to anyone that's a fan of Ward, a fan of Kovalev, likes boxing. Give credit where credit is due. Yes. I don't give a damn who wins. Yes. I don't care if you're a fan of Kovalev. I don't care if you're a fan of Ward. If Kovalev wins, give Ward the credit. He is due. Yes. Don't try to diminish the, the resume. Don't try to diminish your skills. Don't try to diminish all the bull that comes with it just because you're a fan. Or even a fan of Kobe that was like, well, maybe he wasn't this. No, he's still the goods. <laughs> Same thing. If Ward wins, don't say, I don't want to hear about his inactivity. Or if he wins, I don't want to hear about his inactivity. Any of that. I don't want to hear about the Super Six. These are two guys. This is what, as boxing fans, we've been asking for for God knows how, how long, and, and a lot of it has been skipped over or delayed to the point where we don't even want to see it anymore. These are two of the best guys in their division. Granted, Adonis Stevenson is the man. He's yeah. the lineal champ. But in my opinion, these are the two best guys in the division. Yes. This is a fight for pound for pound number one. Deal with it. Yeah, and... By diminishing the other fighter, you take away from your fighter's accomplishments. I know it's great. You really love Sergey Kovalev. Great. But by not giving Andre Ward the credit that he's due, you take away from the win of Kovalev. Because then it's like, oh, well, if Ward isn't that great, then why is this significant? And vice versa. You guys got to give these guys their credit. And also remember that no matter who wins, unless you're getting a monetary cut, it's not that serious. So say we say that Kovalev is going to win. If you're a war fan, don't be like, oh, well, you're going to be mad come November 20th. No, we're not. And vice versa. Because if you watch our videos breaking down the fight, and if as we go on in this video, you'll see that we are not picking Kovalev. But if Kovalev were to win, guess who's not going to be upset? Me. Him. What's going to happen is we're going to watch the fight. We're going to analyze what happened. And we're going to learn from it. And then we're going to bring you a recap. Also, I also don't want to hear about how someone won. You're getting a W. That's all that matters. If it wins Bourne, hell, we just watched the Bourne fight. If it was a dirty tactic or what you think is dirty, yeah. and like Hakeem always says, when we have discussions with other people, 
The Queensboro rules are 150 years old. Boxing has evolved very much since then. You're going to have to deal with it or else you're going to be very upset all the time. I don't want Because even... both of these guys have learned the tricks of the trade that are outside of the Marcus Queensbury rules. And they're also those tricks of the trade that have kept them undefeated. That's right. For instance, both guys are very excellent with head control. Kovalev, when he throws his left hook, is pretty inconsequential. We talked about how he throws his right hand and then throws a power jab. When he throws a left hook, nothing. But if he misses a right hand, what he does is he'll throw it, the person will duck, he will grab that head like this, I'm over here, and that left side of the body, well, the right side of the body is wide open for a left hook. And he throws that excellently. Ward can throw a variety of punches off of head control. He can throw jabs, he throws right hands, he throws hooks, uppercuts. He throws pretty much every punch in the book off of head control. But he also controls your arms. He controls your chest. He makes you square up when you don't want to square up. These are things people aren't seeing because they're like, oh, this is dirty, this is dirty. No, this is part of the game. That's why the refs don't break it up. And they say, hey, your hands are free, work. Inside work is part of the game. Also, his head is always in a position where you can't hit him effectively. Once he gets in there, he puts his head right here so the person trying to hit him can't hit him effectively. Right in the crux between the shoulder and the neck. Yeah. I can't hit someone like this and I also can't hit someone like this. And if you try to uppercut, you won't be able to get enough space in there because he's pressed directly against your chest. But then he will break just enough while keeping his head on his chest, on your chest, to land effective body shots. Or, in the case of like Chad Dawson and Alan Green, vicious uppercuts. Against Sullivan Barrera, he was able to knock him down with a, flip, with a left hook. So, that's something Kovalev is going to have to be cognizant of when they get on the inside. We talked about in our breakdown videos how Kovalev, once guys get in on him, he will headlock them. And come up. Yes. Which is against the Marcus of Greensbury rules. Tough titties. Deal with it. But we also have a ref that says, hey, break that shit up. Yeah. And if he doesn't, then it's up to you to break that hold or maybe wait for the ref. It's up to you. If he doesn't say break, you either keep fighting or you try to stop him from doing that headlock. And we talked about in that video how Ward can attempt to not end up in a headlock. I'll give you a hint. It's angles. So, these are my questions going into the fight. We've talked about how great these guys are, and it's true. The main thing is down the stretch. When you start getting into the middle rounds, and say Sergey Kovalev is not implementing his game plan, or is unable to. His coach, John David Jackson, has said he's very hard, he's very hard to instruct. And he has to subtly throw in things that he wants him to do during the fight while they're training so he can be programmed to do it in the ring. So if those things do not work, where is plan B? And on the other hand, if he is able to implement his game plan and he's able to capitalize on the three mistakes that John David Jackson says that Ward makes, that's something that I will want to learn about during this fight. I want to know because if Kovalev wins, it means he was able to take advantage of those three mistakes. Whatever they may be. Yes. I personally have not seen these mistakes. John David Jackson has more skin in the game than me. He, he is more of an experienced guy. 
So if he's able to implement it, he's able to teach me something. And I'm looking forward to that. But my question is, if he is able to do that and Ward's still up, can Ward come from behind? Because we know the power difference is vast. Ward only has a 50% knockout ratio. And he hasn't knocked out anyone since uh, Chad Dawson in 2010. Which was a thing of beauty, by the way. Paul Smith. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He, did, he, did, he stopped Paul Smith. Yes, it, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't like a knockout. He beat Chad Dawson in the submission. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Can he up it a notch and show what Ray Leonard showed against Tommy Hearns in the late rounds of that fight when Angelo Dundee told him he was blowing it. Can he turn it on like Roy Jones did against Antonio Tarver when he was dead tired and had his body had nothing, but he still pushed it on in order to win? Can he, you know, can does he have that in him? Can he turn it on like Pernell Whitaker did against uh what's it, did Bellas Hurtado mm -hmm. when the De La Hoya fight was slipping out of his hands and he comes in with a late round knockout? That's what I want to know if Andre Ward has if he's behind. If he's ahead, then we have to find out if Kovalev has that. Because from what we've seen, if he's not getting the look he wants, he begins to rush things. And he did that a lot versus Chalimba. Chalimba isn't as well-rounded as Andre Ward. So he wasn't able to make him pay as hard as Andre Ward can make him pay. So those are the questions. And the reason I personally am going with Andre Ward is a matter of history. When you have a infamous puncher going against an infamous boxer at the elite level, nine times out of ten the boxer wins. Now, we have told you that Sergey Kovalev is an underrated boxer, but we're not going to say he's on the level boxing-wise as Ward. I, I have not seen that. So, going back, the last puncher versus boxer win I can think of is Jones Tarver 2. That was 12 years ago. So going with the pattern of history, Ward gets it done. Very close match, I think so. Now me, personally, I only think the opening rounds are going to be close. Like I, I said it on, in, the, uh, in our technical toolbox series that whoever wins this fight is going to be pretty dominant. That's, I think that whoever wins is going to dominate the fight. And I think the first three, maybe four rounds might be a little iffy. But after that, Ward takes over. Even though Sergey Kovalev has that equalizer there, I think he neutralizes it enough early to when Kovalev starts to rush late, he's not setting it up the way he should to land it effectively. And he may get in some right hands, but they won't be effective after like the seventh round. So after that, Ward begins to cruise. Maybe if, because there's another reason why I'm going with Ward, is the team he's working with. Kovalev only has John David Jackson, who's a great boxing mind. Mm -hmm. But he was very dismissive of Andre Ward until recently forgetting that he had seen and worked against Andre Ward and Virgil Hunter before during the Super 6 in the Allen Green fight so he got to watch Andre Ward beat the stuffing out of Allen Green for 12 rounds but for some reason he did not remember that he didn't start giving Ward props until about two weeks ago all the way up in the lead up to the fight until then, until the open workouts, he was like, oh, you know, well, his legs are gone. He doesn't have a great chin, which is strange because 
The last time he was seriously hurt is when he was dropped by Darnell Boone by an uppercut 10 years ago. Yet, this notion that he doesn't have a chin is still prevalent today. And he's fought several punchers since then. But, those same people want to discredit his Super 6 work saying, that was so long ago. You know, that was five years ago. That's too long ago. But you still want to say he has a weak chin based off of him getting knocked out over a decade ago. When the Super 6 was half a decade ago. That doesn't make sense. Can somebody make sense of that for me? I, I'm, I'm eager to learn why that makes sense. What you got? I got nothing. I'm still picking uh, Ward. I think it's a possibility that he will have to get up off the canvas. Um, fighters like like him do get hurt. They will get hit, especially in those filling out rounds. Or maybe something comes that he does not expect. Yeah. Um, the the closest that the power guy came lately was probably mostly Mayweather. Yeah. And shoot, that was six years ago. Mm -hmm. Where it was a really clean couple of shots, actually. Yeah, he hurt Mayweather bad. And Mayweather dug deep and took that right hand away. And Mosley had nothing else. So, if Ward can take away Kovalev's right hand, because while Kovalev does great feints, his jab only comes at one speed. It's always full speed. And even with the level change... It's still the same speed and it's going to the same two places. Whereas Ward works his, as we showed you in the technical toolbox, from several angles, even his level change is different than most guys. Most guys either jab straight to the head or straight to the body. He will go down like he's going to your body and jab at your head. And when he's doing that, it takes away the right hand counter mm -hmm. because his arm is in the way. And like we said in that video, he's also off at an angle, which even more so takes away that right hand. So if he's successful with that, this fight gets really boring for Kovalev fans really quick. Now, the last time we figured a fight was 50-50 was Crawford Postal. We were crazy wrong on that one. I told myself, I can't even don't make the same mistake again. I know everybody's calling this a 50 50 fight, but you have watched these guys for months and years. Trust your eyes. I think it's more 60 40, 70 30 for Ward. And if you think it's Kovalev, feel free to share. We have no problems out of that. Yeah. We will discuss it in the comments down below. Yes. On Facebook, on Google Plus, on Instagram, yeah. wherever. We have no be respectful, because we're we will be respectful to you and we ask for the same thing. Yeah. Don't don't give us the old I don't really actually have an argument. I'm just mad at what you said, so I'm gonna insult you. Cause you'll get your feelings hurt. If we bother to respond. But really, that's all we got, guys. Make sure you like really tune into this fight because this is one of those fights that you can actually learn something from from both guys yes but like rob said hit us up on our social networks like this video if you are a non-subscriber this is now your time to become a subscriber thanks and we will see you guys in the recap we're going to be watching the fight together for the first time in a long time mm -hmm. So we may just turn on the camera and do it immediately after, depending on how tired we are, because I'm a dad, and sometimes it gets late, and I get tired. I'm an old man now. But anyway, stay tuned for that, and we'll see you in the next video. Until then, fight on. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's a game. I kick crime, hurricane. I told them I don't play. I'm liquid. Black Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Street Fighter.